anywhere, in any form. Before my mother passed away, I was at the dining table in Australia, and I had a piece of paper, and I wrote the whole principle, and she goes, Neville, you're so intelligent. I just, whoa. You know, she really, whoa, she was so, so shocked because I grew up in the jungle, you know. She had no idea that I learned such things. And she passed away shortly after, so. Oh, uh, <laughs> I know, I know, she didn't have time to receive the blessing, but nevertheless. So, I want to uh, give each person, oh, by the way, I, I have. I apologize to Sandra. Sandra Lowen's online watching this. Okay, she will give a presentation. Sandra, can you go online and introduce yourself? Can you share your screen real quick? Can she hear us? I hope I'm there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Just say hello. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, hello. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, let Let them see you for a minute. Uh, Okay, it says I'm screen sharing. Okay. Sandra, Hopefully I'm still there. there. You are. Hello. Uh, a lot of you, a lot of people know you, but this is the first time I ever saw Sandra or met her in my life. So it's good to see you, Sandra. So we'll go back now. You can uh, stop sharing your screen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. Okay, our first presenter. So, look, again, I have to look at the time. We have all this time. So, we're going to go for 20, uh, 30 minutes, okay, each presenter. I'll, I'm going to be timing them, okay? Some may be shorter. Some, so, we'll see how it goes, okay? Soak it in, brothers and sisters. Let God into your heart, okay? Can you do that? Yes! Please turn your cell phones <laughs> off. Don't start. Turn them off, please. I have to turn mine off, too. Uh, let God really work, okay? So our first presenter, she's a wonderful sister that I've come to know since I've been in Bellingham. She has a vast experience and wisdom that she can bring to us. And uh, she really loves God and can feel it every time she speaks. So let's give a big hand to Patty Cavalier. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And it's so good to see you from far and near. Thank you for coming. And we have a lot to share today. Um, my presentation actually is going to be pretty short because it is, uh, I thought about doing principal creation, but I thought, you know what? I just uh, decided to do the introduction, but it's not the introduction that's in the book, OK? <laughs> um, Thank you, Neville, for making this possible for all of us. He has lots of creative, wonderful ideas, and he gets us all involved somehow. <laughs> so um, anyway, welcome. This is a great time. This is a great choice of how you're using your time right now at the moment. And uh, we have many presenters coming up here. Um, I'm rooting for everyone that's giving a presentation, because I know it's not easy, you know. And uh, some, even people who are experienced get nervous, but I'm nervous anyway. <laughs> so you already know who I am. Uh, I'm giving this introduction on a personal note. That's why I say it's not like, you know, what, what's in the book. And I was really praying about it, and I asked Heavenly Parent, what do you want to say in this introduction? So that's kind of scary. Look at the picture. Uh, that picture I chose this morning, I hope it's my only slide. And the reason for that is, hopefully, if you don't mind be looking at me, <laughs> you can look at the slide. And 
um, you can see what it is. And what does anyone feel when they see that? Does anyone have a particular interpretation of maybe why I picked that slide? Peace. Looks like heaven and there's meaning for those It is, you know. Uh, well, that's a good idea. Actually, I didn't think about that. <laughs> I was thinking of the reflection, meaning God and me, you know, that we want to, uh, ultimately, we want to reflect God's uh, love. And I'm assuming everyone here believes in God. That's why I'm saying these things. <laughs> But um, I pretty much assumed that everyone here believed in God already. But I thought this picture of a reflection, I felt, is um, the still water. Yeah, that's peaceful. Dual characteristics, I see that. Um, but I felt also it reflects me and God. I'm, I want to reflect God. I want to reflect all the qualities that he has, in, uh, especially in a loving way. That's the challenge. So I'm just going to give a short little little uh, testimony. I met and joined this movement over 40 years ago. I know there are people in this room who are way beyond that number. <laughs> and uh, some of them actually were my mentors. And um, so they know who they are. Um, I had a very serious mind at 21 to you know, practicing a faith, but not experiencing God. And I practiced my faith very diligently, but I still didn't feel God very much. I, there was a lot of tradition. I'm a Catholic from the past. And I got kind of upset about it because I thought, wow, I'm spending all this time going to church and I know all the rules and I know, <laughs> I know how I should be living my life according to the church. But I didn't, you know, I even, I couldn't say I even felt Jesus, which was really upsetting to me. How come I don't feel Jesus? Because in the Mass, it's all about Jesus, pretty much. It's about God the Father, too. But anyway, so I thought, if I don't find out, if I don't find God, if I don't feel God, then I don't see any purpose for religion. I was very mean to Heavenly Parents. I said, I'm sorry, I'm going the other way. If I don't find you soon, if I don't do something, or if you can't what I need to do, then I don't see the purpose for a religion, because if I can't have a relationship with you. So anyway, the story of, of God and the creation, it's been a never-ending search for all human beings since the beginning of time when we lost our personal connection with God. And that's all clarified as you studied the divine principle. It's interesting because there are many different creation stories if you go around the world, many kinds of cultures, so many kinds of cultures uh, that talk about the creation, where, where they came from. And um, one thing that really intrigued me recently, actually, a few years ago, I saw a scientist who traveled around the world and he met every conceivable people you could meet, but he was actually doing a DNA test on everybody. <laughs> and um, it was very extensive. But in the, in, the, in the mix, he got the creation story from those peoples. It was fascinating. Um, you know, the type of awareness, and uh, some of it is very close to uh, what, what we teach, especially about the fall, which is really interesting. It's out there, but people don't really understand it deeply in terms of making the consequences. And that's not the consequences God had in mind. So um, and has anyone heard any other creation stories? If you've ever been in touch with uh, Aboriginal peoples here in uh, the United States, you may have come across something like that. So <clears throat> anyway, the, the divine principle is obviously the the, te the teaching, it's a template. I see it as a template. You can put that, you can put the principle over different religions, uh, all kinds of religions or all kinds of belief systems. And uh, so the divine principle kind of is a way to, I feel in one way, help people solve the puzzle. And the puzzle of life, the puzzle of God, the puzzle of what God had in mind originally, 
So that is a beautiful thing. And I think um, even though I came from a well-established religious culture the last 2,000 years, people are proud of that. And there's many good people that you know practice that religion. But honestly speaking, <laughs> I was feeling like the walking dead. I don't know why. I have no idea why I felt that way because, you know, everybody on, in my family was online <laughs> with the church. So, anyway, when I... Um, it's The divine principle has life-changing effects. I'm sure all of you here have their own story. Everyone has their own story, how it affected how you look at everything, and you know, relationships and... Um, as I was younger, not married yet, um, I, when I heard the principle of creation, I thought like, oh my goodness. I started looking at everything through the dual characteristics. <laughs> yeah, those dual characteristics are, we're part of all that. We experience it. And to have a name for stuff and have explained give and take action, now those are really, those are very helpful to everybody. But still, um, just like Neville was just saying, actually, we have to practice it. And on some level, I think we all practice. Uh, of course, we do. That's why we're here. It's very helpful to us. So <clears throat> anyway, the, the deeper you study it, the more it changes your life. It's just one of those things that as your brain absorbs it and begins to understand it, you, you get a lot of inspiration to go further and really understand and try to come closer to God. So up here today, people who are going to be presenting, um, who's ever taught anything before? Even in a small way, you ever stood in front of a bunch of people to teach something or just teach something to your friends? Yeah, just discuss something with your friends and discuss ideas. That can be a way of teaching too. But teaching also having give and take with someone about principle is also a learning experience. And the divine principle, look at us, you know, just look at us in this room from different parts of the world. And somehow we have no problem being here, you know, even being married to each other and things that we didn't see would happen have happened in our lives. So divine principle is an incredibly, um, it's an incredible teaching that really, if people are looking for unity of their mind and body, their heart and soul, you know, it's an, a door that you can walk through and you will find content there. It's really, it's really wonderful. So, <clears throat> it's like, um, I would say the divine principle itself is like the bones. It's like an outline. And um, as I was preparing today, <laughs> or today, I was thinking about that. I'm thinking like, oh my goodness. Uh, it's, it's an outline. <clears throat> when you first meet it, you don't realize it's just an outline. But um, because of the volumes of two parents' speeches, that's kind of like the flesh on the bones because it's how to live, uh, how to apply, and how to experience the principle in your life. And our... True Father never got tired of speaking about true love in one way because I wasn't really there and maybe enough in my own life before I started my family especially. I, I just thought like true love, oh my goodness. He never gets tired talking about it like all the different ways that, you know, that you can experience God. And um, it was just amazing like I don't know anybody in my whole life ever in any religion that could speak like that about true love and how it manifests and how to you know how to develop also your relationship with God it's just like this you know people talk about the circle of life but actually they don't talk about God being in it and so that's a that's a problem that was a problem for me on some level so also, when we study the divine principle, um, we can see or we can begin to see that we have enormous potential as a human being. You may be familiar with the word individual truth body. So that comes up in the principle of creation. You know, that, if you just sit there and think about it, 
an individual truth body. Oh my goodness. And um, so, you know, God made us like to be able to completely uh, take responsibility and make decisions. Um, but of course, with God's under, with our understanding of God, a relationship with God, there's nothing we can't do. And uh, also, there should be no one that we cannot respect on this earth. There should be no one anywhere that we cannot respect because every born human is an individual truth body. And uh, so that is, to me, that's a fascinating thing to me. And that's another thing that really stands out because um, it really, I feel, defines who we are. But we need to think about it individually <laughs> and figure it out and realize that you know, only you, Jeremy, can love the way, you know, God wants to love through you. You know, any one of us, even un unmarried, Shibuku, you know, only you can give the world. No, it's true. That's, those aren't just words. Well, they are just words, but I'm sorry. It's the word of God. So if you believe in it, you know, you are like so special. Every human being is so special. It means like, wow, we have a lot to discover out there. You know, not just in our families, but there's all kinds of really amazing, interesting people. And um, recently I had an experience actually where a homeless person came up to me in a very quiet place. I was a little nervous because I felt like he was, um, I felt like he was watching me first and then he came over. He had a big smile. I think he told me about five lies, but <laughs> anyway, about who he was. <laughs> but I was looking at him and I, his smile, and I know he was trying to con me, but maybe it was the Christmas spirit, I don't know, it was around Christmas time. Uh, he, he had cornered me basically in a part of the parking lot where there were no people. And I thought like, oh, what's he gonna do, you know? <clears throat> and then I stopped. I tried to stop that way of thinking. And I tried to stop, like, you know, here's my brother, and he's older than me, and he's had some pretty hard times, obviously. And um, he was very polite, though. It was really weird. He was, like, kept striking up a conversation and telling me who he was. But then I, and then I, uh, he was right in front of my basket, and I, he, I told him why I bought these flowers for my neighbors, and he goes like, oh, you know, he was having a little conversation about that. And then I felt, oh, he wants something, he wants money. And so I just pulled out a fairly good-sized bill out of my pocket, and I gave it to him, and he bowed. And I thought like, oh, I thought this guy was like a gangster or something. But he was like, oh, thank you, and like, you know, and, I knew he needed it, you know, I knew he was a homeless person. He was not dressed too badly, but I could tell. So I thought, oh man, you know, I was thinking all these horrible things, you know, and just thinking to myself, like, oh my gosh, what does he want, you know? Of course he wants something, but can I give it um, without a thought? So that was a good experience for me. We get tested all the time. Who knows, it might have been an angel or something. <laughs> testing me. But I, I really felt like he's cornering me and there's nobody here, you know, like, which way do I run? I can't even run anymore because my knees are so bad. So I thought, like, I couldn't run if I wanted to, but so, but that was, but that wasn't so much my thought. It quickly evaporated and I kept looking at his smile, which was a fake smile, but I realized, yeah, it was a very interesting smile. But I realized, anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who he is. And he's he's respectful, and I and I, even if he wasn't, maybe I would give him the money more quickly. But he, uh, yeah, he was he was there, and I had no idea. And I just thought, like, I just it, I felt like it wasn't even my hand that was in my wallet. I felt it was like something moving me, you know. And I, I got in my car, and I thought, like, what did I just do? But anyway, because uh, <laughs> I don't usually do that so easily, you know. But you know. This is a very good test for me to think about anyone out there could be God, somebody that God loves. Well, God loves everyone, actually. We believe that. 
It could be somebody. I don't know anything about him, but he was he was there and uh, you know acting like he was listening to me and stuff, and it was okay. And I thought, oh boy, you know how many people don't have anyone to help them, you know. So anyway, so anyway, when we study the nature of God, we can really see what we can see what our potential is. Okay, and it's a huge journey. It's you know, it's a story that really unfolds in the principle about God and mankind, where it's going, where it's gone like the restoration, and that's a sad part, but where we are now, where are we now, you know? And it's our personal responsibility to read it properly and pray to know what our, you know, what kind of action, what kind of path. And we all have, in, we're individual truth bodies, and we all have individual talents, something that no one else can be. Can you believe that? No one else can be you. And no one else, you know, God can't love anyone the same way he loves you or Makoto or Setsuko, you know. But even people that we think we don't, we can't love, actually, it's just, you know, it's just another brother or sister that um, we, we can love. We can choose to love or do something for them. So I feel that's really the way we... We've, we can experience God's heart, really, is realizing how much love is the principles trying to teach us that it's, it's boundless. But, you know, got to not just read the words, but think about, oh, how does this make, you know, how, do I, how am I living right now? What do I think? You know, it's a big challenge. So anyway, that's my, my personal presentation. <laughs> I'm not competing, actually. <laughs> But I wanted to do that because I felt like I didn't want to just say the same words. And after 40 years, 40-some years, you know, each one of us who's lived a while, you know, even 20 years old, has, or more, or less. Okay. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> okay. All right. She said it's over, so. Okay. So anyway, thank you very much. And... Um, we can all think about how to be a reflection of our dear Heavenly Parent. Thank you. Thank you so much. God works in mysterious ways. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, Pat. Let's give another big hand. Come on, you know. It, it is something of personal heart that God uses each one of us uniquely to explain God's heart. So I have a, a, just a logistic things for you. Uh, there's one participant that won't be here till 1230. That's my son and my grandson. They're going to do a combination kind of presentation. And uh, we will have some snacks in, in between, okay? So like my grandson, he's four years old. He comes to my little house. You know, we live behind our son. And he goes, Grandpa, can I have crackers and cheese? And that's all he wants, you know. <laughs> so we can have, we won't, don't have crackers and cheese, but we have snacks, okay. <laughs> so please don't, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have a good workshop. The last, th the other thing is, I asked the crowd last time, we can hear all our presentations, you know, 20, 30 minutes, uh, we have the time, and then we can have lunch at one time and conclude the workshop. Does anyone like that kind of idea? Yeah? yeah? It'll be okay with you? Because honestly, it'll be easy and better because I know that some people have to go to back to Seattle. So I wanted to do this in the beginning because we introduced all ourselves. I wanted to acknowledge, I'm really grateful to see Rosie and Charles from uh, Seattle, please give them a big hand. Uh, Rosie is the pastor in Seattle, and she really worked with me to get this going, you know, and I really want to thank her for that. We will have, we will reciprocate. Bellingham, we're going to reciprocate by going to Seattle for a similar workshop, right? Rosie, is still on? Yes. All right. So we'll look forward to that.
So right now, I want to introduce someone who has never given a divine principle presentation, I don't think, right? So before he comes up, I want to ask Arnold to come up here and uh, help with this chalkboard. And can you help him bring the chalkboard? No. Oh. Just a stand. We have a... Just a stand. Oh. You want to use the... The which the the stand for his uh, the, the, no no just for the mic for my uh, he, okay. he's not he's not talking about the microphone oh. so you need what do you need for your setup this the microphone this one okay microphone stand yes <laughs> it's all yours okay. Uh, you can use this mic too, okay? Is that okay, or you need you? Yeah, oh, just the stand. Yeah. Do you want me to take the microphone off? No. Okay. Okay. No worries. So we are your most, and we admire you so much for taking this, uh, for bringing, coming up here and sharing. So hang on, not yet. So. Makoto, he can say more about himself, but he's 13 years old. So, brothers and sisters, let's give him a big hand. Power on. I'll just here. Okay. You're going to use the mic. Okay. Say a word. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I've never given a lecture any before. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Introduce ourselves. Tell us where you were born and something about you and in, introduce that woman next to you. I was born in California. I forgot what city. <laughs> and I am very tall. <laughs> and this is my mother. In case you didn't know. <laughs> What's her name? Sesco. <laughs> oh, I said you said her name. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be giving a lecture about the. Well, I'm gonna be introducing the divine principle. So I'm gonna be reading off of this. Okay. So, we all want to be happy and joyful, but how does one attain happiness when people's desires are fulfilled? Mm. The word desire, though, isn't understood in its original sense, because in the present circumstances, our desires tend to evil rather than good. We all have an original mind, and the original mind repels all the evil things you wouldn't want to do. But due to the human fall, we now have the evil mind. The evil mind is the exact opposite of the original mind and seeks to do evil things rather than good. If our desires come from the original mind, when we fulfill them, we feel happiness. But if our desires come from the evil mind, you will feel misfortune. Okay. Through the human fall, mankind fell into a state of contradiction and ignorance. Fallen people did not know the origin of their two minds. By this, we enter a state of self-destruction. We have a mind and body. People's minds are ignorant of fundamental internal knowledge and of external knowledge. 
There are a lot of questions which we must answer to get out of our ignorance.